one ultimate team matchup as you get a look at some of the stars What's here up, man, on today's 17 game. Fans. Let's My get right to it. I want to welcome you to today's video. Today we're going to be taking a look here at some gameplay, and what I hope you guys get out of this is this one principle. You don't have to do a bunch to be effective. Being effective is much more about execution and a lot less How about the kickoff uh, unit play look game. Up and and send this one away. Really all I want you to see here today. Uh, we've done a couple of things, yeah, but the best carry thing I can tell you is to simplify. One of my motto is, is to just keep things simple. And the reason I say that and try to live by that principle is because when you try to go and study everything and do everything, what you'll find is that it ends up getting very complicated Looks and the like answers the are actually quite simple. Here. Okay? So anyways, what we like to do here, I like to start out in this ace pair chief just to kind of let my opponent know that I can run the ball so I come out with power up. And he is going to lose yardage here. Set up here. A so we're going to get out of that. But so basically, we go in and out of the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook. And the main formation that I use is the ace pair flex and the bunch wing. Those are kind of the two primary packages uh, that I use. And the reason I, I want to show this to you guys, you guys have already seen this, but I want to kind of give you a preview of what we're going to be doing in Madden 18. Madden 18... What I want you guys to see is that Madden 17 is similar to Madden 18. Madden 16 is similar to Madden 18. Like they're all they're all similar. It looks like this guy wants to bet some money. Um, I don't really want to get into that on, the, on this circle because I don't know how secure it's going to be. But what I mean by what I'm saying is that the games are very simple in, in that they they all kind of work the same. Okay? And so you can kind of predict how it's going to play out. You can kind of know what the go-to formations are going to be, what the go-to uh, plays are going to be, those kind of things. And so you can actually start to kind of prepare before the game comes out. The way I do that is I go back to my basics, the system that I've ran all season long, which is this bunch week. I've ran this as 9-12, and the reason that I'm sharing this is because, in my opinion, this is something you guys should consider. You should consider maybe potentially simplifying the play a little bit, go down to one formation. It doesn't have to be a shotgun bunch. I really could care less if you run the play right I think the Pittsburgh Steelers, their shotgun bunch is the most effective for multiple reasons, one of which is that it has single back ace pair flex which has a really good quick pass that I can use that I can use on the goal line back to throw now on first down I'm always getting started out here so give him a couple of one other thing that's really interesting to me is that Madden and this is an interesting concept that I've kind of kind of been thinking about doing a little bit more with is this idea of clearing the board and uh, what I mean by that is uh, there's a, uh, a story that I heard about uh, a chess player and the way that he kind of learned how to play chess this is one of the best chess players ever the way he kind of learned how to play is that he took all of the all of the pieces off the board except for two and he just had the king and the pawn and, the, and, and him and the guy that was teaching him they both just had the king and the pawn and they played and that's kind of how they trained to learn the game and the whole concept behind it was number one kind of begin with the money which we all kind of aware that first thing with some of the shit but even more so what do you do with the empty space what do you do um when there's room for smack, the when there's room complete. for clutter to be gone, for when there is quiet, and, and I and think that's something that really applies good here to so far the opening drive. When you think about this, about because what happens is most people is they're going to run three, four cover three, three nickel normal cover three, nickel normal strong cover three, and they just keep going in and out of virtually different cover threes over and over again. And what I've always tried to kind of emphasize on my YouTube channel is that it's not necessarily about, you know, can you run. It's not about how many plays you run. It's not about how many formations you run. It's not about how well you do that, or how well you mix your plays together, whatever it is. It's all about how do you execute under pressure? Can you execute your play when the blitz is coming? 
And to me, when you look at the chips, when you look at that, and you look at the, the pivotal football games, what you'll normally find is some type of press man to coverage. Um, and then you also, so then that's that's kind of what the defense will run. They'll run some type of press man coverage with a pressure, and, or, a, or a zone coverage with some type of pressure. So five man blitzing with, with different coverages and behind it. Your job, offensively, you can always see this. They're going to run some kind of short little passing concept. Normally it's going to be levels, um, which is a quick end concept or uh, some type of you know, mesh concept, some type of quick pass. And the only reason it even matters, in my opinion, is because Madden works virtually the same way. Um, when you really look at it, when you really look at the best players, it's all the same concept, all the same thing. Okay, so if I can impart anything on you guys, don't get so bogged down by the formations and by the playbooks and by all of that that you forget what really matters in this game anyway, and it's 99% and you execute the plays that you're calling. You know, something I've been working on right now is some behavioral changes, some disciplines, some habits, and things that I'm continuing to find is... I actually know more than most people about habit change. I know I know quite a substantial uh, bit of that. I've done quite a bit of research on it. What I continue to find outside, is that I still have coverage. trouble applying what I know, uh, and mainly, mainly because down, uh, I'm just not doing it. I'm just first pass is I'm not following through. The uh, I would rather learn more Bennett, about target. it than and actually apply what I know. Okay. So much and of this I game think that's true for all of us. We're all kind of looking at this kind of secret sauce and formula. Like and dude, I'm telling you guys, it's all about it's all about your execution. It's all about how do you put it all together. Being able to truly put it all together is very, very difficult, but very, very effective. Which you can Okay, again, you know, I'm not the best player. I'm going to go for it here on four. Man, he got in there I so quickly, Charles. What could the uh, offense have done to adjust to the campaign? But what you're hoping is that you figure out, you see, and get it. Well, this is taking it at a screen. But when you keep it simple, and when you don't get bogged down on things like that, and you have to catch a random catch in between two people, when, you do, when you're able to bounce back from things like that, when you're able to, uh, when you're able to execute under pressure, when you're, when you're able to catch your user catch uh, against somebody, when you're able to truly calm down a little bit and really plan out what you're going to do, I'm telling you guys, a lot of times you'll be amazed at what happens. You'll be amazed at what you're able to accomplish. And you'll also be amazed at the mistakes your opponents will make when you keep things simple. Most people in Madden, what they'll think you're going to do is uh, they don't expect you to run the same play. Confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you score once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. There's only a couple of different things you'll see across NFL defenses. What you'll find is that most NFL defenses Defenses, yeah, the things that they change up the is their pressure. They normally stay in the same coverage. They'll change up which side the pressure comes from, but analysis, normally they stay in the same coverage. The okay. and, and, and they'll player, change their coverages at pivotal moments in the game when they really need to do something. But for the most part, their coverage shell is actually the same, but they change it with pressure. I did some research as well with a couple of guys in the NFL, and I've just, it's been really cool to learn that normally the coverage actually changes is, is normally the same as that coverage. Uh, but what they're actually changing is their blitzing angles, their blitzing, uh, they're either blitzing from the right or the left, and they're blitzing the double edge, and they're going to go in their coverage version, and then you just have all of these and things. And so what we're going to do in our defensive series, our defensive guide, too, is I'm going to be talking with you guys about that this year. Uh, I'm going to send out a, I'm going to publish, I'm going to try to publish this guy before the man gets here. Uh, he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene. That's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart. But I want to get it in your hands so that you can see it. And the main reason is because I think there's some help you prepare. So a lot of the lessons that I've learned from that in 17, I want to keep the record five minutes. So right here, we're, we're, we're going to go and up, up probably two touchdowns. Super Bowl 50. If we can execute here, like what I would like to do is try to score uh, uh, before the two and one is possible. And goal. And the reason is because it's going to give them time to basically get the ball back. Now back to throw. 
And he fires one that's intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. And a big turnover that's there. Kind of, that's kind of the thing that you guys watch. So it's you right there, so I, I kind of had a bad game. Like I came out in the Z spot. And I can't really, I can't really run the Z spot very well. Really 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 my, the play that I normally really like to do is to keep a double miss, trip. Then they did have and, something uh, going. Anyway, they were the ball up, on offense, had a nice sequence going. Yeah. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what awesome. you were doing well yeah. before. Yeah. I thought you were going to say they need to have make sure. But remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. <laughs> now he'll let it go deep right side. And almost intercepted. Oh, it would have been his second so pick of the game. So defensively, what you're going to see is two. But you're going to so see it, and, and if you guys are watching this, I'm going to run from very, very, uh, very, very different, very, very different looks. Ready to throw on second down. A minute 58 to go in this first so what, half That's what you play. see, is you see the, the changing of the blitz, after this. left, right, and, and, and I think that really does help a little bit. When you come into third and ten situation, and another thing that you can do off of this Offense trying to avoid is you can situation you can situation and play to the to the uh, to the game. So like right here, I'm gonna send double edge pressure. And I'm kind of running a cover two in the style because I want to. Do, that's where I want to go. Is those crossing patterns. But I want to prevent anything else. So now what we're gonna see here. This is a bit tougher. Fourth and four. Double edge pressure, and uh, my job is the user at the middle of the field. I'm going to jump left and come back to the right here. So kind of still in that cover to invert, but a little bit different. So now we're going to try to catch him. Here we go on fourth down now with Brady. Here. It's complete There's to the drag. A little too quick. Boy, a curious to come down. On. To go for it and you see, that's kind of how you can you know, slide it in there. And then you can go double edge heat in that situation is because spot to start you know we just we, we have been sending three man three man three man and then we we swing that double edge heat on them. So like now we're in a situation uh, and this is kind of how the game ebbs and flows. And the only reason I like to give this time to the tailback. Give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Can you effectively run the pursuit offense in that? I think it kind of can. Run. That's what an offense um, calls staying on schedule. Three to four so yards on first down. Out. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. But um, this HP ball deep is kind of home run play. In my opinion, Fournette is the best budget halfback. He's 40 cap value, has battle rate, but what he also has is I think he gets some of the best animations. And I really can't honestly tell you that. I think that it's because his rating is bad. If you have a back that has like 90 stiff arm, 90 do, basically what you want to have is the most of them are 90 as possible. If, you have, if you're in the 90s, you're going to do well. Okay, when, you, when you're in the 80s, it, you, it's really like you might as well just throw the rating away. From what I'm kind of understanding at least, you might as well throw the rating away if you're in the 80s. When you're in the 90s, now you can really do some damage. So what you want to do is you want to try to find a running back. 99 doesn't necessarily do anything more than 90. That's kind of some of the things I'm finding. Uh, and also you're going, in my opinion now, Madden, because of all the added ratings, because of all the added stuff, you're going for animations. You're not going for um, the other, whatever the other thing would be. Because animations are going to trigger some really cool things to happen. And if you can get those cool things to happen, that's why I have the Kelvin yeah, Benjamin part. Because he has spectacular the catching well. deep right, so That's why I'm using the Brett Favre now. Because, because he has boosts and he has deep so threats. And so combined, it allows me to now throw. I can throw more. I can get better animations on my receivers. All of my receivers have the deep threat attribute. What I need to do is switch out Chris Conley for Randy Moss. But, yeah, you just see it. So we know we're in a situation where we need to go vertical a little bit more. We'll play a little heavy up top. 
that's one thing we do um, we do execute on this is we do a little bit more deep shots that kind of thing and we do see him continue to do that so where is the emphasis so for me right there because of the situation we're in my emphasis is going to play be to play deep short sometimes the emphasis is going to be to play mid range and kind of hang in the middle of everything sometimes your emphasis is going to be to play in the and mess around with it and which team has the advantage? Let's just go back. Last time on I'm offense, they were going downfield, get into a good rhythm. Mm -hmm. You can see a little Combined. more bounce in. One other thing that I want you to see the sideline really get into the game. So, so defensively, you think to yourself, how when, do we take when we talk about greatness, when we talk about faith, the, what the makes someone a really, really phenomenal player as opposed to an average player, a lot of it really comes down to the little bitty things uh, over time. So consistent, steady, small deposits over time. And um, calling the right play in the red zone. Calling the right play when you're going for a two-point conversion. Making your field goals. The little bitty things are so important. And the wide receiver. guys, it's not even, it's not even close to, to how important it is. When you really think about it, most people want to, to go for the big scheme, the big play. I would probably make a lot of money. If I sold you on the fact that I can give you a scheme that's impossible to stop, and I charge you ten, fifteen dollars for it, and you end up paying me, what you're really saying to me is that you want the scheme to do the work for you. You have to do the work for you. You have to do the work for you. You have to do the And when I give you a play, and here's Shane Graham now to kick it away following the touchdown. Okay, that's why. Uh, everybody knows about Z spot, but not everybody knows about Skimbo. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The New York set to take the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And the back goes into motion. two men under. I like to do this to the air here after the IMT on the last drive. Martellus Bennett, the intended receiver. Two man under is basically cover two. Down. It's just the man version. I like to throw it at him. I think it's actually I pretty good. You. In the huddle, for, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking about situation. is we get this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge. And they missed it. And Brady going to be intercepted a third time. So now here I've got about 13 seconds. Johnson. Okay. And, and this is where I, I truly believe this is where you really become the real. You can execute. Go up by four scores. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. The wide receiver moving to a new spot. If I get a touchdown or a field goal, if I get a field goal out of this drive, they'll try and start this drive in the air. It's a really, really big deal. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. And on second and ten now. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Come on, get going. Yeah, so He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And over the Split middle the here. Oh. And he's brought down, but not naked. before getting across midfield to the 45. What well, we do in this situation, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. So we try to do the next best thing here. And we're going to max protect with the tight end. I'm going to put the running back on a wheel just to make everybody back. Try and get a, at least a decent look here. We'll wait. Patience in the pocket is huge. Trying to get circle. Circle would go up. Circle would go up. Go up the field. Go up the field. Square. Now he's going to send Call this one square. deep right side. He oh, one that's intercepted. intercepted. Picked off by the but again, you always really go for it. You always try to, to, to get it in. This is now one out. Probably should have held on to it even a little longer. So but it's a little thing, man. Okay, Defensively, well, the, the, the little the subtle things of, of making sure that your cover two defense 
actually plays over the so top by testing the practice mode, we'll by the little things and making sure that your lineup is correct. That it's just these it's little bitty things, man, that, that really help you. The rest of it is all experience and reps and the training York and, set to take um, the field. and just playing a bunch of games. And you know, the you guys, it's just a little just bit any interception. Are you a little bit so more important. cautious when you start so that next important. drive or no? You just like, so, for example, he comes out in pro, immediately I go from him. Every time, no matter what, that's my base. It's only what what my base show. It's my base pressure setup for under center. What is my base pressure setup for shot? How many do I want to see? Um, where do I want to see the pressure from? Do I want to go right? Do I want to go left? Do I want to... All of those things are immediately triggered as soon as I see a formation on the third and four. It's literally just a second. Just a split second. And get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up the play action and throw the football. You control the clock because then you have the ball and they don't. And off of the physicality, someone, if you could help me, tell me how to turn so the stupid camera toggle off. Run. I wish ESPN would take this stupid game that, that stupid thing in the game. Because it, I always end up screwing up my defense because I bump the camera angle. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really ah, nice gain really on the previous play, but, but the reason, the 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 reason we send no blood pressure, and I'm going to say this until the day I die against pro formation, because the routes can't, the routes can't get open quick enough. The, normally they're going to run some type of play action, right? So that's why I do it. Um, You get right down in here and, and we play. And this is what we do. Now Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the ball. We just can't do the time. It's the darn usual for the team that um, lost it to well, get it back. To because to this, is, this is the quarterback. So the ball gets away from him. Hit. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, the teammate is able to come up with the ball. I'm going to sit in this center for a second here. And I get the ball. And it is incomplete. You can't force feed it. And Dallas, they'll take over in terrific field position. I think cover three is most of the offense. Certainly, cover three has its weaknesses, but when called at the right time, I believe cover three is better than cover But again, it goes back to the concept when you call them at the right time. It's called the right here. You're in cover three and I look for but they're hoping is that that last mistake okay. is their only one of the game. Coaches. But I ran in cover three talk about turnovers, the last right? play. Minimizing those and maximizing and I, and opportunities. I it. And boy, they had oh, a high praise right for this rookie receiver. Hey, we yeah, asked the coaches things. about him, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And now you see they like these measurables. Cover three. 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 It's always been a change. How about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about it. The way it goes out through the football. There, I need to recognize it. And besides, when it's in the air, it's his and only his. This game is not too complicated. What happens is when you don't do the real things, it catches up with the game. It's like right here. He's sitting fresh off that left end. You know it already, because there's no way he could possibly listen to the right side. And, and, and so if I was smart, if I was going to pass there, I would have uh, at least slid protect my line to the left side. Last play, I didn't slide protect my line to the left. He was able to get pressure. So you see, it's just a constant, it's a constant one of those games. It's a constant chess match. It's a constant battle. It's a constant situation where you analyze what can he possibly do with the formation, with the plays that he just picked, and then you adjust, and then you try to say, okay, now, what does that mean from what I've called? Is it going to screw me up? If it is, then I need to adjust. If I can still get away and run my play the way I want to run my play, then I'm going to still run my play the way I run my play, and that's going to be that, okay? But again, it's just little things, it's experience, it's understanding. You got to think through some of the stuff. And I'm going to share some, some content with you guys uh, down the road to extend this in the next couple of days. Shane here, where I'm going to show you exactly what to look for on offense and defense. What um, this is taking about gonna, seven yards build deep. A, build a little scheme from scratch, and, and we'll show you. We'll and show you what we're looking at. Um, and then line. you can get the punch, and you can get the nickel, the or the, the Bengals defense and the punch off. Turn it over. Great field position. Turn it six points uh, up. Uh, They've got to uh, recover, recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. It's not going to be a very long book. So again, my books are not meant to be long. They have to be simple. Didn't happen. 
Also show confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to That's why I keep my books to about five and rebuild that confidence. I try to keep it very, very short. I try to whittle it down because I believe that perfection is achieved when there's nothing left to, not when there's nothing left to add to your thing, but when there's nothing that you can possibly take away and still get your own. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Such a big principle. I really, truly believe, if you think about it, perfection is not when there's nothing more to add. It's when there's nothing, nothing left to take away. Once you achieve that, then only have you achieved perfection. Okay? And it's just little bitty principles, little bitty things that matter and they add up, and they're little bitty things. Um, and I hope this is making sense. If it's making sense, let me know. Sometimes I wonder if it's actually getting through to you or if I'm just kind of chatting and I'm going on a tangent and it's not actually helpful to anybody. The goal here is to be helpful. But what I find is I continue to watch. I'll, I'll get online and I'll go to YouTube and I'll look at these videos. And what I continue to find is that there's 45 freaking videos on the same thing, the same principle. But they end up trying and people get so daggone confused and they're paralyzed. Because that's what happens to me. It's just it happens to me. I get so bogged down and paralyzed. When I truly try to hone in and learn, side. So for example, I was looking at this, this is such a fun example, gap. but it's so true, in and I think you directly though, apply it to Madden. I was for the defense to researching the a coffee, took care of it, uh, a coffee pot today, and, move the defense and I was trying to figure out, okay, so I have twenty dollars nice to spend. What is what is the best I can get for my pot? What is what is the well, most going to make me the best cup of coffee from twenty dollar coffee pot? I want to know what what is that going to be able to get? Okay, and I'm telling you, literally, I, I went to the store to the this game, the web, nice and I tried to figure out what what can I get with my twenty dollars that's going to actually get me a really solid coffee pot that's going to do what I needed to do. It's going to make a good cup of coffee and good enough. I spent three hours researching trying to figure out the stupid thing. And it, and it, and it, and it, and it all conclusion is I still have I still have no no clue what to coffee pot. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? Like Here's what I found. They might catch a defense. You rely on the internet. That play call, but unfortunately, you rely on Google. If you rely so on the opinions of people, say, it's not like that you don't know. On a kick like that. Yeah, it's, it's real easy for me to what say this, but anything in the 40 to 49 yard range should be pretty automatic for an NFL kicker, you trust. especially in terms of at least if you trust their opinion. So you're right. That is then a surprise that this will come up so short. So what, 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 what makes it a little easier? Well, you It'll find someone who's an expert in the field. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Someone that you know. I spend a lot of time working with this stuff that has done the thing in the search and you don't have to. And then you ask them, here's my question. I need a coffee pot to do this, this, and this. I'm so this years old, I want to make it. I want to use it three times a day. That's what you do. And then... Now They're going to tell you, okay, well, throw. if I were you, I would buy this coffee pot. You say, okay, well, thank you so much, and then you go buy it, and you leave it alone. The right? same, thing the the same thing applies to Madden. The same thing applies to work. The same thing applies to anything you want to kind of put in the, the microscope. <laughs> the That's how you do it. So what I'm trying to say is, I want to be a resource to you guys. I want you guys to be able to bring me your questions. Ask me. How do I feel about crossing? How do I feel about dollar fifty six? How do I feel about this and this and this? If, if, if I were you, what defense would I run? If I were you, what defense would I run? All those questions, ask those questions in the comments, and hopefully, because I've played this game for a billion hours, maybe I have something decent. Okay? But if you don't ask me those questions, I can't do those answers. Because I can sit here and I can, because I'm giving you kind of the answers now. Like I'm running the fifteen steals playbook, so if you're going to ask me what playbook would I recommend people. Run, be pissed I'm running the, the, the Cincinnati Bengals defensive play. So you're going to ask me, what defense playbook should I run? It's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals defensive playbook. That's going to be my answer. Why? Because after testing all the playbooks and looking at all the playbooks, I've come to the conclusion that they both give you the best bang for your buck. They both achieve what you need them to achieve. Okay? And that's pretty much it. It's that simple. And then, so did I say, um, then you asked me, well, how many formations should I use? Well, I recommend two or three. I, I mean, I don't recommend much more than that. How many plays should I run? I recommend about 20. If you run more than 20 plays, I think that's too many. Um, 
what muck cards should I get? Well, look at the cards I have. John Ross, Chris Conley, Pro Four. I mean, and then if you want them for a specific reason, and if you clarify your questions and you say, well, I want to know what receiver would be really, really good for user catching. Okay, that narrows it down, then I can tell you, okay, Randy Moss. So that's what I wanted to kind of say. So, so, so that's kind of what I, what I see myself as. I see some of myself as someone who tries to do the experiments, learn, test things, so that you don't have to, and, and I can answer your questions easily. Thank you guys so much for your time. I hope this video was helpful.